Now the goals of a healthy lifestyle are to focus on on our metabolism and we, as far as I'm concerned I want to keep going back uh, to, the, to the main topic here which is preventing insulin resistance and I want to focus on uh, insulin and glucose and I want to focus on this whole notion of uh, GG and modulating uh, GG and insulin in the body. The lifestyle should should have us uh, restore hormone function and and keep our at a cell level keep our cells functioning properly. A lifestyle by the way is not a diet. A diet is something you I guess you do for a period of time with some goal of losing weight. But that's not the point of a lifestyle. A lifestyle is forever. And it's something that we, it, it's a way to live in terms of how we exercise and what we drink and the type of people we socialize with and what they eat, by the way, is very important. And uh, so a lifestyle is forever. So people that would go on some sort of a, uh, a doctor supervised uh, protein shake or some sort of a, um, a structured uh, diet program uh, as far as, as as far as if you compare that to a lifestyle the lifestyle will always be better because it's something that people will adjust to for the rest of their lives it would be something that they can do something that works for them and uh, I believe that controlling understanding your whole metabolism and focusing on insulin and GG goes a long way to achieving a healthy lifestyle I have these little uh, cartoons up here uh, someone who's trying to stay uh, fit and firm and Try to understand that if you're looking at your face, you have to think of that one little dot, one little spot with this little arrow here, and uh, what that really looks like uh, when it's magnified. And then even when that tiny little dot is magnified, what it looks like at the cellular level. So we want to we want to put our brain down into the cellular level and we want to have a cellular uh, a healthy uh, lifestyle if there's such a phrase. In other words at the cellular level we want to have a healthy lifestyle. Now as I said before what I did over the last uh, uh, many years was I reviewed a lot of expert opinions on uh, lifestyle and health. Uh, a lot of uh, doctors and researchers, academics and uh, professors, and all of them had their own opinions about food and exercise and metabolism. A lot of them had their own advice about how to prevent insulin resistance and chronic diseases. and everything I'm saying here, Corin, is really more of an introduction to all of these uh, to all of these experts because I'm still I'm kinda concerned that you wouldn't be able to have or take the time uh, to listen to all of them. I'd only take you three or four or five or six years I suppose to listen to all of them uh, given your busy schedule but uh, it would be well worth it because uh, now you're going to be able to get a lot of the information that I'm trying to summarize here for you, but you can get it from these uh, eminently qualified experts in their field. So I wanted to highlight uh, some of these, and uh, uh, I don't have uh, I, I've I've listened to and reviewed and read their papers and whatnot of hundreds and hundreds of these experts. And um, I just want to highlight uh, some of them 
in this next uh, section. Now, in terms of healthy foods, um, you have basically, uh, well, one can divide it into many different ways, but I, I, I chose to divide it into uh, basically four main groups. The, the so-called uh, plant-based uh, proponents, the so-called uh, hunter-gatherer proponents, and uh, then there are those that say, well, we need a special diet for a period of time because we're trying to cure uh, some previous um, dysfunction and, and uh, problems with metabolism or autoimmune diseases. And then finally, uh, there's a number of people that believe uh, and, pr and promote what's called a traditional diet. So let's go ahead and meet some of these uh, experts and I'm just um, many of the, before we get to that point corn um, the best source of what they say of course is their own video and their own papers and for for each video that you see here uh, coming up or um, yeah for each one I uh, just know that there are there may be dozens of other uh, videos by the same person uh, exploring all uh, manner of different topics uh, related to a healthy lifestyle. So I'm just kind of focusing um, on, on one just to kind of introduce some of these different experts to you in the hopes that some of them you'll want to review uh, later. Now, in my opinion, uh, Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn, uh, who is uh, many years as a doctor at the Cleveland Clinic, um, is an appropriate expert to start this whole discussion about a healthy lifestyle. Uh, he is he uh, he has uh, many YouTube uh, presentations and papers. And uh, uh, he promotes what he refers to uh, and as a uh, plant-based diet. The plant-based diet would be the vegetables, fruits, grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. And he's, he also promotes this whole notion of no added oils. No added oils of any kind. Of any kind. And he has his reasons for that in terms of the health of your blood vessels and the health of your heart. Uh, he, uh, he advocates uh, no added sugars of any kind and certainly none of the RCOs. Um, he has uh, in one presentation on how to prevent a heart attack, uh, he goes to uh, at some length uh, what are some of the causes of a heart attack and how to prevent it. And I personally think that everyone uh, in the world would be lucky if they could watch his video in their own native language. Now, I'm not trying to say that everyone should be a vegetarian, but the reason everyone would be lucky to watch his video and understand what he's saying is because one he really highlights the benefits of all these plants that are all around us and and he elevates the importance of vegetables and beans and nuts and seeds uh, and uh, uh, whole grains and uh, he elevates all of that in terms of his nutritional uh, qualities to the point where uh, most most of the most of the most Americans you know are just kind of meat and potato people and uh, they really need to, to know that there's a very there's a whole group of people who who are promoting healthy uh, foods but I wanted to say <clears throat> the reason I'm starting off and leading off with uh, Dr. Esselstyn is because 
he does something in his video that I think he, he has a message there that's even more important than the value of the plants for nutrition and for good health. He has a message there that is more important than all of that. And what's that? I think he has, he says it better than anyone else that I've ever heard. He says one, he has, he has one main point, and that is, if you take care of yourself, you can prevent chronic diseases. Now think about that for a moment. Most of us believe that whether or not we're afflicted with chronic diseases is, is, uh, is just kind of a natural part of getting older, and it's just kind of Russian roulette, and, and if you're lucky or unlucky. But Dr. Esselstyn's message is much more powerful than that. Uh, in fact, it's, it, he, he negates that completely. What he's saying is that if you take care of yourself and you have a healthy lifestyle, you can prevent chronic diseases. So I think that's amazing. He says it better than anyone I, I ever heard. He's kind of the, as far as I'm concerned, kind of the George Washington of this whole notion, a founding father, so to speak, of being able to control the destiny of your health. And for that reason, I, I think that anyone that finishes high school should be required to listen to his lecture. Uh, certainly anyone finishing college or graduate school should be required, and anyone who's flying an airplane or, or as a professional person taking care of anybody else, where they have to be able to use their brain and have some stamina and and um, persistence and, and uh, some expertise, all of them should certainly listen to his lecture, and they shouldn't even be allowed to get a degree unless they've, they've taken a little quiz so they understand what he's saying. Uh, I don't mean to underestimate his importance here, uh, but I, I really think that uh, watching his video should be you know, uh, pr practically um, uh, something that everyone um, is required to, 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 to listen to and to pass uh, just to get their citizenship. So anyway, that's that. Anyway, uh, I wish uh, Dr. Esselstyn all the luck in the world. Another doctor that is a proponent of the plant-based uh, diet is uh, Dr. Michael Clapper, and uh, he explains in his lectures why uh, uh, oil is added oil is not good, not even the precious uh, olive oil. And uh, by the way, I hope everyone is aware that around the world, olive oil and extra virgin olive oil is something that is highly sought after and is quite expensive to buy and it's full of fakes. That's right, full of fakes. A lot of these bottles of olive oil, uh, if you listen to the uh, news accounts, they're adding soybean oil or canola oil or all kinds of things and adding green chlorophyll in there. Uh, so you've got to, uh, if you're going to use olive oil uh, sparingly over the uh, against the um, advice of these good doctors, uh, then at least you want to find an authentic uh, olive oil source. Anyway, uh, Dr. Clapper goes on, uh, no RCOs and, and no salts, no added salts. I suppose he would not be a promoter of a Himalayan salt, uh, which um, I promote uh, because I want to get all those trace minerals in the diet, and I think that Himalayan salt or some of the sea salts are a good way to do that. But nevertheless, Dr. Clapper has his reasons, and I urge everyone to watch his video. Um, uh, 
Dr. Joel Furman is another plant-based uh, um, doctor advocating uh, uh, vegetables, nuts, fruits, seeds, and uh, he, uh, he goes after all the processed foods, these RCOs like uh, white rice, and uh, he thinks it's all just linked to cancer and heart disease and stroke. Uh, uh, the reason I wanted to put him in this uh, highlight, Dr. Furman, is because uh, his middle name ought to be phytochemical, uh, Dr. Phytochemical Furman, because uh, he just goes on and on about the wonderful benefits of all these phytochemicals. Again, he is elevating the status of these vegetables, broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, and all the fruits that you can have with all these wonderful colors and but he's focusing on something called phytochemicals and what are those for corn those are all these antioxidants by the way from a natural source a natural source and we'll talk about well, I'll talk about it now um, you know our body when we want to fight disease Sometimes we try to oxidize. Uh, we try to oxidize something that is a, a foreign invader, and that's just part of our toolkit. So if we were if we're taking antioxidants that are supplements, we're taking antioxidants that are supplements. We are weakening our body's own ability to use a tool like oxidizing something. Let's say we're trying to oxidize a cancerous cell or part of a cancerous cell or we're trying to oxidize some, um, we're trying to oxidize some sort of chemical in our body or pesticide or something like that. In other words, we need the ability to oxidize something. Now, if we're taking supplements that are high in antioxidants, whether it's a vitamin E, uh, whether it's a, a beta carotene, or whether e even these all these uh, fish oils and all that, these omega-3 fish oils that they tout as uh, antioxidants. Well, if we're taking these additional supplements, we may be knocking out one of the most important uh, tools that we have in our body to fight disease. So, uh, back to Dr. Furman, uh, I can't remember his opinion about supplements, but I will say he certainly is a champion of all of these natural fruits and vegetables and uh, nuts and seeds. He's got them, he makes them into salad dressings and he's got recipes and I think he's uh, you know, he's, he's become quite a promoter, but it's just amazing um, all the things that he can, all the benefits from all of these natural foods uh, and the fiber and all the rest of it. So uh, please watch uh, uh, his video. Another plant-based uh, person, very, very famous and I think the one that Dr. Esselstyn credits with uh, even uh, uh, getting him um, uh, to take a look at the plant-based, uh, um, uh, call it a healthy lifestyle. Um, anyway, this, uh, this doctor, uh, Dr. John McDougall, uh, very, very famous, uh, thousands and thousands of patients who, who've uh, cured their diabetes and our arthritis and all kinds of things just by following his plant-based diet and specifically what he calls a starch-based diet where he promotes the the idea of eating uh, rice, corn, uh, potatoes, uh, I suppose with the skins but I, I, I did I never asked I did I never uh, discussed that or uh, focused in on that but anyway um, uh, uh, when he he learned this whole notion of a starch-based diet over the years, and uh, he originally was working as a doctor uh, on the Big Island of uh, Hawaii, 
and uh, he said that he could watch all these uh, workers coming in from Japan, the Philippines, China, Korea, and he said, you know, they were all uh, trim and healthy. He said they had a traditional diet of rice and vegetables with uh, just a little bit of meat and no dairy. And uh, he thought that that was really uh, the ticket to a long and healthy life. And he compared that to their uh, second and third generation uh, children that, that and grandchildren that grew up in Hawaii. And, and he could just see that they were starting to get diabetes and all the other chronic diseases. So uh, anyway, he has a number of uh, wonderful presentations on YouTube as well. Again, uh, well, I'll, I'll say this, at every meal, I start off with a whole plateful of vegetables. That's, I start off with that. And now, now I, uh, I probably prepare them a little differently than Dr. Esselstyn or, or Dr. McDougal would, would, uh, would advise, but um, uh, I am, I'm always a little concerned that uh, I want to make sure that the, uh, that the, that healthy fats with all these healthy uh, um, fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin E and uh, D and uh, uh, vitamin K, K2 by the way is, is, the, is the fat soluble vitamin that is found uh, 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 in uh, animal products and uh, believe it or not Gouda cheese uh, Forgive me, Dr. McGoogle, for discussing Gouda cheese while you're up here on the, on the screen here, but um, that has the reputation for the most uh, vitamin K2, uh, I guess, per, per weight of any food that we can eat. Anyway, so, um, uh, but the point of all this plant-based uh, 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 doctors and researchers and all that, they are elevating the whole plant world to really where it, it should be. And it should be the, um, it should be a big part of everyone's uh, a diet for a healthy uh, lifestyle. Now another whole group, and I guess you could say it's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum, are the hunter-gatherer uh, uh, proponents and promoters. And I suppose one of the most famous is Professor uh, Lauren Cordain. And uh, um, he says that uh, our ancestry, going back hundred uh, uh, decades and decades of, or, uh, um, what do you want to say, uh, 50 or 100,000 years or more, they were all people that, uh, that hunted animals and they gathered what they could and uh, they had vegetables but uh, they were, uh, they, they uh, survived on uh, hunting down game and eating it and vegetables and they had a limited amount of carbohydrates. Uh, in, so he's advocating in his, uh, in a YouTube video here which I have uh, where he discusses something called the paleo diet. And um, uh, of course, he's also uh, advocating the avoidance of all refined and processed foods. Uh, another uh, uh, paleo uh, diet proponent is uh, Mark Sisson, and uh, he has a book that came out called The Primal Blueprint, I believe. Uh, what I thought um, Corn, I was hoping you could see uh, his video as well because he's so excited about his uh, about his lifestyle. Uh, he enjoys uh, every minute and every meal. He says, and um, he wants this whole notion to upregulate uh, fat metabolism. Now, that was something I kind of referred to a little earlier about it takes some time as you're adjusting your diet from, uh, from uh, call it uh, 
uh, excess carbohydrates and refined carbohydrates, uh, it takes some time for uh, the whole GG symphony to start working again. And uh, uh, GG is, the whole symphony is there to figure out um, not only how the liver will, will uh, kind of meter out the glucose that it's keeping, but remember the liver only has a one day supply. Uh, so GG and the whole rest of them, all the signaling and all the enzymes, they're all trying to meter out energy from the fat stores, which is uh, what something uh, you and I want because we want to get uh, fit and firm. Um, uh, Mark, uh, anyway, the whole notion of upregulating uh, fat metabolism is, is this notion of, um, of a hormone sensitivity to the whole GG symphony, but it does take some time. You can't do it in a couple of days. Uh, you might be forced to if you're put in a dungeon without food or water, but it would be very painful and a horrible experience. But gradually, over a couple of months or, or half a year or, or a year, you can have uh, GG and, and all the members of the symphony there working together and, and that's what uh, Mark Sisson means by upregulating uh, basically these these two um, symphonies both the insulin and Chi Chi. <clears throat> now he uh, Mark Sisson he agrees get rid of all the RCOs all the sugary drinks all the industrial seed oils and he also advocates getting rid of grains because even if they're 100% whole grains or even a fermented grain, uh, he advocates getting rid of all those because as a hunter-gatherer going back 50 or 100,000 years, uh, that was not a part of our diet and therefore not a part of our genetic engineering, our, our primal uh, blueprint, uh, as if it's kind of a blueprint or the plans for a building, so to speak, um, uh, or, uh, or a house, or even the cellular home that I've been talking about, the, the house at the cellular level, uh, the way the doors and the windows and all that work, once you add grains into your diet, you're throwing that all out of whack. Uh, you are, uh, I, I guess according to Mark Sisson, you could never have a metabolic uh, proper metabolic function if you add grain to the diet by definition. By definition. In, in other words, if you add grains to the diet, you will become metabolically dysfunctional. Now, um, uh, Mark uh, uh, does admit to having a glass of wine and, and a and some chocolate and some other things that modern man has figured out how to how to make and uh, I suppose if he had some of my 100% uh, uh, whole wheat, whole rye, uh, chia seed and uh, quinoa, quin, quinoa, quinoa, what do they call it, quin, quinoa uh, bread that I make here at the bakery, he might be tempted uh, because I, I uh, ferment that so long that most of the sugars are gone in the thing and all that's left are all these wonderful trace minerals and all the fiber. But I, uh, anyway, I, I respect uh, Mark's take on this whole notion to eliminate uh, grains entirely. And I agree, since most grains are not uh, fermented, soaked, or sprouted, only 99.999% uh, or more, uh, all the pizzas, the spaghettis, the pastas, the breads, the cookies, all that kind of stuff. So all that grain material should be avoided by everyone. I just slip in my, my um, sourdough bread because I think it is a healthy addition and uh, it provides uh, fibers and all kinds of things that I want in my diet and it's utterly uh, delicious. Um, I uh, added um, 
a little video here by Christina uh, Wehrner because uh, she has an entertaining and a rather whimsical uh, debunking of the paleo diet where her uh, one of her main point is is that whatever they were eating 50 or 100,000 years ago is not anything that we can find in this day and age. So uh, she just says that um, uh, it's hard to go back to what they were eating because it's not available in our century. So anyway, it's just kind of uh, humorous and very informative. And uh, she studies a lot of ancient cultures and uh, very entertaining. It's on the TED Talks there. Um, here's another person that's in the paleo mode. Uh, both of them, uh, uh, Dr. Paul Jamine, uh, I believe is how you pronounce that. He's pictured there with his wife. I think uh, he's at MIT and she's at Harvard, uh, and they both are doing a lot of research on on foods and a healthy lifestyle. And uh, he advocates not the complete elimination of carbohydrates. He he has some what he calls uh, safe starches, um, but uh, um, he he believes that that there are. Uh, some levels of glucose that are necessary even for the proper functioning of proteins in our body. Uh, in other words, that, that five grams that I talked about, that, that baseline level that your blood wants to keep, um, I believe that uh, 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 Paul Jaminé would uh, uh, probably try to keep that level going and, and, and um, he does that by, by a whole lifestyle plan and recommended foods uh, to uh, keep glucose levels um, at just at this uh, adequate spot. And he does that by limiting uh, the carbohydrates. Uh, he also limits uh, the amount of protein in his diet. And he elevates the amount of healthy fats. Now, uh, this business about low protein, I forgot to mention that even Mark Sisson, uh, who wrote the book The Primal Blueprint, uh, in, a, in one interview that I saw, uh, he says to him, himself that over the years now, as he's been refining his whole, refining, I don't want to use that word, as he's been reflecting on this whole uh, notion of a paleo diet. Uh, he really believes that it is also a low uh, protein or a moderate protein diet because the body uh, will be able to make glucose from amino acids. So if you have a high protein intake, you also have a high glucose uh, intake, so to speak, and you have a high insulin response. And uh, everyone in this field is trying to explain how important it is to keep insulin levels down. And uh, so they all seem to agree on this whole notion of, uh, of low protein. And of course all the plant-based people um, all the plants, uh, the protein sources that may come from beans and, and uh, rice and potatoes or whatnot, those are in very, very, very uh, moderate amounts of protein to begin with. Uh, so, but uh, when you talk about the paleo people corn, they're coming around to the whole notion as well that you don't want to have all these uh, steaks and um, uh, and trimming off all the fat, like that sort of thing. Uh, they're actually uh, uh, higher amounts of fat, lower or restricting or eliminating most carbohydrates, and a very moderate uh, amount of or low amount of uh, protein. So anyway, uh, uh, Paul Jaminé and his wife, are, uh, uh, they had a number of health issues over a period of time. They were frustrated with all, 
all the medical answers and medical treatments and they finally came up with this whole uh, plan themselves that they that, that they refer to as the uh, the perfect uh, diet or something like that um, another uh, two kind of uh, giants in this whole uh, whether it's a low car uh, low protein or low carbohydrate let's put it um, or, well anyway the two giants are uh, Dr. Colin Campbell and Dr. Uh, Eric Westman and uh, they they uh, they have there's a YouTube uh, presentation there where Dr. Colin Campbell associates high intake of protein with the risk of cancer, the an increased risk of cancer. And uh, uh, even though there's this big debate going on, uh, if you listen to it carefully, uh, Dr. Westman and Dr. Uh, Campbell really agree on many, many, many points. And that is to, if you're going to consume carbohydrates, uh, in other words, if you're going to consume the energy from plants, if you're going to consume sunlight, if you will, let it be natural whole foods. They both agree on that. They both agree on getting rid of all the RCOs in the diet. Uh, as far as the protein go, uh, the levels of protein, I think Dr. Westman, even though he's, uh, uh, he respects uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Atkins and a lot of the things that Dr. Atkins promoted as a pioneer, uh, I believe that Dr. Westman is also trying to uh, urge people to um, concentrate on healthy fats and very healthy uh, car whole and natural carbohydrates and very moderate level levels of uh, protein. If you if you ever start any of these uh, um, uh, diets uh, or these uh, this called this lifestyle you have to really check with a doctor to get your insulin levels checked your glucose levels checked uh, how much glucose over the last three months has uh, attached itself to your uh, red uh, blood cells and there's a name for that I think they call it the uh, a B H one C or something like that. It's a it's a blood test, and they can tell how many of your red blood cells have become dysfunctional because they have been attached or attacked, if you will, by a glucose molecule. It turns out that red blood cells stay in the blood for several months. By the way, they'll stay there longer if you are in a healthy diet. Uh, they don't get as uh, recycled as fast. But anyway, um, <clears throat> and, and that may affect your HbA1c test results, but they're testing the amount of sugar uh, over a period of time uh, in your blood. So um, you have to understand what you're eating and how that relates to uh, sugar in the in the bloodstream and also the amount of triglycerides and your levels of HDL now you can you can you did not hear me say check your cholesterol levels because that seems to be um, that seems to be a very false reading for many reasons you can have low cholesterol and and half of us will die of a heart attack and you can have high cholesterol and half of us will never have a heart attack so re you really want to focus on uh, uh, insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance uh, you want to focus on triglycerides and uh, HDL uh, of course your weight and the other metabolic uh, uh, factors of blood pressure um, and how large your stomach is. <clears throat> um, I included this uh, video. I wanted to highlight Melissa Washburn because she is uh, she really struck me as uh, 
Oh, just, you know, anyone's uh, favorite uh, mother in terms of taking care of their children who are having medical problems. And by the way, Courtney, I'll take this opportunity to say hello to, to our dear mother. And mom, thank you very much for all of your advice even when we were younger, which was to never punish your stomach no matter whatever we're doing. And I always remember you saying, you know, eat all the right foods to get your vitamins. Um, anyway, well, thank you for that advice. And, and you actually had a lot to do with, the, with this little video presentation. Um, so I'll make another video presentation for you uh, when you, on your 100th birthday. How's that? i will be your 100th birthday present. Just a few more years to go. Uh, anyway, on this, uh, 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 Melissa has this program, uh, which she refers to as, a, as the GAPS diet. And uh, this is actually a, a name of, of, um, of a syndrome called the gut and uh, psychology syndrome. Is that psychology or physiology? I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, who's a doctor who came from Russia, and uh, she uh, tried to figure out how neurologic disorders and allergies uh, were all related to a leaky gut and uh, problems with our whole intestines and colon and all that, and how that related to constipation and autoimmune diseases and all sorts of things. So uh, I kind of wanted to highlight uh, Melissa's uh, uh, YouTube video because she's just amazing in her, in her positive energy uh, uh, level, her presentation. And she gives some uh, pretty uh, down-to-earth, uh, non-medical type of explanations for uh, how to prevent Alzheimer's disease and keep your brain in a healthy condition how to make sure your digestion, di di digestive tract is working right and the importance of all the, the microbi microbial flora in our gut and how, in her opinion, uh, she, she, she has this uh, main point here and that is that the, the health of the digestive system uh, holds the key to a child's mental development. So for all the parents who are suffering with uh, autistic uh, problems with their kids and all that, I, I commend anyone, uh, Courtney, if you have any friends that have those uh, problems in their family, uh, urge them to go ahead and listen to Melissa uh, Washburn, an amazing, she's a, she's a GAPS instructor now because she's become, it's just become her whole life. Uh, preventing uh, these problems for, uh, in other families. Um, uh, uh, the last, uh, I had four uh, categories up there about uh, how to choose a healthy lifestyle. And uh, Sally Fallon Morell is the uh, president of the uh, Weston Price Organization. And uh, she has a video where she talks about uh, the whole concept of traditional foods and traditional diets where uh, traditional people ate the organ meats from pasture-fed animals and they were they had sacred foods that that had uh, very healthy fats uh, whether they were whether it was a, a fermented butter or cheese and uh, where they were trying to really uh, get all these vitamins that are only, only found in, uh, in animal fats. Uh, so, Courtney, if you have a friend or two that's a vegetarian and they're not eating any animal fats, they have to understand the importance of each one of these uh, vitamins for cellular health and uh, their cofactors in in uh, the production of enzymes, uh, in, the, in, in all the um, uh, things that enzymes do, important for brain function and all that. So she, um, 
uh, for example, I'll just read here uh, what vitamin A is needed for uh, in, uh, in, in Sally's uh, YouTube lecture. She says it's needed for protein assimilation, for the assimilation of calcium. So how ridiculous is it to be taking calcium pills if you're not eating that in the context of a whole and natural uh, uh, food diet? Um, because if you're not getting the vitamin A, you're not going to get the calcium no matter how many calcium pills you're taking. Uh, vitamin A is necessary for proper growth, for the prevention of birth defects. I guess you're not worried about that now, Corn, but you have your children and they're starting to have more and more children and it's going on and on and on, so they're worried about birth defects. It's, uh, vitamin A is important for the proper function of the glands, our pituitary gland and all, oh, all the other glands in our body. It's important for thyroid function. It's important for our immune system. It's important for the uh, production of our stress hormones like cortisol that I was talking about before. If your cortisol hormones are not working properly, uh, that can just throw off all your blood sugar right there. Um, anyway, it's important for the production of the estrogens and the testosterone, what they call the sex hormones. And it's important for the health of your eyes and your skin. I know you love your beautiful skin. And of course your bones because you don't want to shrink and shrink as you get older. So anyway, these are just some of the things that vitamin A is very important uh, in terms of uh, how our body functions. And remember, vitamin A is only found in animal fats. Now I know I'll say it again, uh, uh, some people may look at all these vegetables and papaya and you know, all these things and say, oh, it's high in vitamin A. No, these are high in precursors to vitamin A, but there's no vitamin A in the plant world. And as we get older, we have more and more trouble converting precursors like beta carotene into vitamin A. So uh, that's why a lot of uh, uh, people, uh, health experts, advocate uh, healthy fats coming from uh, salmon and sardines and uh, so that you're uh, in organ meats so that you are getting uh, these uh, healthy um, so you're getting these healthy fats that are containing all of these fat-soluble uh, vitamins. Very important. Uh, there's vitamin D there too, and oh, it just goes on and on. Um, one, of the, uh, uh, one of the early pioneers of the whole healthy fat uh, kind of uh, counter uh, counter um, she, she, anyway this uh, this researcher this doctor Mary E N I G and Enik I believe and uh, um, she teamed up with Sally uh, to to produce this uh, uh, it's a book called Nourishing Traditions uh, Nourishing Traditions and in there in the book uh, they give a uh, a whole explanation of, of uh, the role of traditional foods um, and how that relates to healthy proteins, healthy carbohydrates, healthy fats, um, healthy vitamins, minerals, and uh, the importance of raw foods and enzymes. The whole first part of this book is, uh, is, a, is a wonderful um, a kind of an introduction to uh, how healthy foods and what Sally calls uh, traditional foods uh, supplied all of these uh, healthy nutrients and not the least of which uh, fiber which they don't which uh, uh, the USDA or the FDA doesn't say is a, is a nutrient but, but it should be uh, included as a nutrient but anyway, in the, uh, in the traditional, 
the basics of the traditional food uh, uh, webinar or YouTube presentation. Uh, they go into uh, the benefits of uh, eating wild fish and seafoods and the importance of uh, free range and, uh, and um, uh, pasture fed type of organ meats and the fat soluble vitamins. They talk about all the fermented grains and fermented vegetables and why those are so helpful in our body. And they talk about raw foods and raw animal foods because they're trying to focus on these enzymes. And remember, enzymes are used for everything in our body. It, enzymes are keeping me uh, here floating and, and swimming in the water and talking to you. It, 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 they're just used for every function in our body. And um, uh, as far as digestive enzymes go, these are enzymes that are naturally occurring in, in raw foods, uh, foods before they're cooked. And uh, Sally and Mary have this, this whole notion that your, your body only has a limited supply or the, um, a, a limited capacity to be able to produce enzymes your whole life. So they advocate trying to get enzymes wherever you can from the foods that you're eating uh, so that it will help your pancreas and help your, your other, um, uh, your mouth and other places in your body that, that try to uh, help with digestive enzymes. In other words, she's, she's trying to um, advocate that we try to eat as many raw foods as possible, uh, such as uh, fermented vegetables and fermented grains, not only because they're easier to digest, but because it preserves the enzymes that were naturally occurring in those foods, and it takes the load off of our pancreas to, to always uh, have to step up and, and produce these uh, enzymes. So, um, anyway, this is, uh, the book is called Nourishing uh, Traditions, and uh, I wanted to say one thing about uh, a lot of people uh, criticize either the paleo or the traditional food or the Western prices as, as some sort of a, um, a meat, big, you know, just kind of a meat eaters uh, uh, plan, uh, diet plan, but that nothing could be further from the truth. For example, uh, in her book, uh, in, in, in their book, I should say, Sally and Mary, um, you can't read it here, but on page uh, 258, they say that fish is the health food par excellence uh, for nutrition and preventing degenerative diseases. And the emphasis there was in the original. So uh, a lot of people associate the Western price with just big meat eaters, but they're not. And uh, uh, they, they really believe in, in, uh, in the healthy uh, fish and sustainable uh, uh, a wild fish type of um, uh, procedures, and they are completely against all the farmed uh, fish. By the way, one because they're 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 isolated, uh, they're, they're they're contained with all their uh, waste products and swimming in that, and and they're fed uh, an unnatural diet with with uh, probably growth hormones and and other chemicals that are that are added to the food to make their flesh. Uh, look like it's it look like a fish um, anyway uh, and then also um, uh, I wanted to mention too that the the traditional diet pr proponents are not uh, high protein people either uh, on page 504 of the book they said that tradition and science confirmed that one needs only a quote small amount of animal protein for good health. And animal products were traditionally eaten in very small quantities. And now I wanted to highlight that because, uh, you know, here I heard Mark Sisson say that as he has uh, matured on this primal blueprint diet, he's eating uh, less and less protein. He said he found that he doesn't need that much protein to have a healthy uh, lifestyle. And here, uh, the traditional 
uh, food proponents, they're saying the same thing, that traditionally animal products were eaten in a very small quantity. And then you have the plant-based people where the proteins that they're promoting are all coming from plants, and so by definition, uh, plants don't have muscle and, and other organs. They, they just have plants, and the amount of protein there is probably less than, I don't know, seven, eight, nine percent or something like that by, and, and, and that's even in the most uh, protein um, uh, dense uh, plant foods like, like beans. So when I started to listen carefully and read a lot of what these different proponents were saying, they were a lot uh, closer in what they were promoting than they were uh, apart. And uh, so I just kind of wanted to throw that out there, Corn, that while one can get on the impression that the whole world has so many different ideas on what to eat and what kind of a lifestyle to, to, to lead, but when you really start analyzing and listening to what they're saying and comparing one expert opinion to another, uh, there is a lot of, of, um, of a community of interest there. In other words, they have a lot of uh, cross-linking opinions about what is healthy. And uh, uh, one theme is that you don't need uh, to be consuming a lot of proteins. That should be moderate to low. And they all agree that you need uh, healthy fats. Now some may quibble whether or not the fat is going to come from an avocado or a sardine. But they, they all agree that healthy fats are very important uh, for a healthy lifestyle. And they all agree that uh, carbohydrates that are whole and natural, in other words, whole and natural vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, legumes, are a very a healthy addition to your diet. Uh, now, there are some people that eliminate the grains. There are some people that eliminate the dairies. And uh, so I, I can't call that quibbling. Uh, they're, they're more fervent about that. But if you look at the, generally speaking, a lot of the main points that they're making, there's a lot of agreement out there, a lot more agreement than there is uh, disagreement. Uh, here was a wonderful video I found by Deborah Mur Murtuk, and uh, she has a little video there. She talks about uh, her ideas of healthy foods, and uh, she is a, um, uh, I think she's a Western Price uh, follower in this healthy traditions, or nourishing traditions kind of idea. Uh, she, she also talks about the importance of uh, fermented grains and fermented vegetables. Uh, she promotes raw dairy, uh, full dairy, full fat dairy from, from dairy animals or uh, uh, cows and goats and uh, sheep or whatnot that are, that are pasture raised and healthy um, and eating what they were meant to eat. Uh, she talks about raw meats and sausages and how that can be very beneficial for the flora inside your gut. And that kind of ties into the GAPS diet and other, um, other uh, efforts that are made to kind of restore people's health. So Corn, uh, later in this presentation, I'll be explaining what I did and what I eat. And I wanted you to understand where, what, what's the reason, what are the reasons I, I have chosen certain foods and and I've eliminated uh, other foods. And uh, anyway, it's all going towards a healthy uh, metabolism. Uh, of course, we, we can't forget about the Mediterranean diet. <laughs> I like Dr. Wheel, Whale, or however, Andrew Whale, how you pronounce his name. But uh, of course, uh, the Mediterranean diet is lots of fish and some meats and poultry. 
lots of vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, some dairy and some grain. Uh, it sounds whether, uh, of course, the Mediterranean diet is the traditional diet, if you will, in the Mediterranean areas. Uh, he thinks that good olive oil uh, is, uh, is, is good for you. And he likes the traditional Japanese diet. That's what they had in Okinawa. Uh, hundreds and maybe thousands of years, they've had their traditional diet, uh, mainly with uh, uh, a, a very special form of uh, sweet potato that they eat over there and, and papayas. And by the way, um, one of the reasons it's low in meat, and a lot of these traditional societies are low in, in uh, animal products, is because it's really difficult in a natural environment to be able to grow enough meat and poultry and all that where, where people can have this uh, uh, as a, a lot of it. It's, it's very difficult. Um, uh, very difficult. You know, it's one thing to have all these big factory, factory farms of chickens and factory livestock and things and feed them soy and corn and make them fat and unhealthy and then sell them to the public. That's, that, that's something that's, uh, 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 th you can produce a lot of what looks like meat and what looks like chicken and what looks like an egg but it's not the real stuff. But if you're raising uh, animals in a completely natural way, uh, you have to really pick and choose when you're going to uh, slaughter an animal and have it uh, as part of your diet. And that's why a lot of these traditional societies uh, had very little animal products to eat um, on a routine basis and they pr probably saved most of their animal products for, uh, for special occasions and ceremonies. So again, this theme of it is a plant-based diet. Uh, it is a plant-based diet supplemented with animal foods around the world uh, depending upon what the, uh, what the environment was, uh, whether it was tropical or subtropical or Arct Arctic uh, conditions. But anyway, uh, uh, back to um, uh, uh, Dr. Wheel believes, Andrew Wheel believes that uh, if you can promote this whole concept of integrative medicine, uh, in other words, integrate medicine uh, with your nutrition and your lifestyle, that can go a long way to to uh, providing a healthy lifestyle and curing and preventing uh, diseases. So let's uh, go to some other experts now uh, that talk about digestion and uh, metabolism and, and certain foods. Uh, there's a wonderful uh, overview of digestion uh, by the uh, Khan Academy and that was done uh, at the Stanford University School of Medicine. And they just discuss in simple terms uh, uh, how we digest our food, what's going on in the stomach, the intestines, and the, uh, the, just the basics as the food is going through your digestive tract. Uh, I think it's very important to have a kind of a general understanding of how we digest our food uh, so that you can think uh, what foods you want to start to eat. Uh, in the same uh, series there, the Stanford Medical School, they did a, a presentation on metabolism. Now, digestion and metabolism, those go together, but they're not the same thing. Metabolism is, is uh, how the uh, nutrients uh, in our body, specifically the macronutrients, how proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, and different hormones uh, how these macronutrients are metabolized. So um, uh, you'll you'll see um, you'll see how insulin and other hormones and enzymes come into play here, and it's important to just kind of as a background about how your body works.
Um, uh, since we're all concerned about, uh, you know, being overweight, um, I thought that I would include a video here. Uh, there's a student at Harvard, her name is Jasmine Rana, and she's uh, teamed up with the Khan Academy as one of their, their teachers. And she has a, a delightful lecture. Uh, you know, she goes through the basics of fat and how fat is metabolized in our body. Uh, she, she discusses this, you know, this, this beginning problem that oil and water don't mix and fat and blood don't mix. So she goes into how uh, insulin and GG, she doesn't call it GG, I do, uh, how, how these, um, the roles of uh, insulin and GG uh, and these, these symphonies uh, uh, act upon different enzymes and how we store and release fats. So I commend you to that, uh, to her video on fat metabolism. And there's another video that she has which is just utterly amazing, and that is uh, the energy that is contained in fats. Uh, the other day I was preparing a, a kind of a collage uh, over the last, uh, oh, I guess five or six years, seven years, I got in the habit of taking a picture of many of the meals that I would uh, eat. Um, so I would put all everything there on the table that I was going to gorge into, and I took a picture of it. And Courtney, you remember? Uh, you may remember when you were here, we took a picture of the foods that you and I were eating as well. And you know, as I compare what I was eating five or six years ago and what I'm eating now, it really hasn't changed a lot. Uh, but um, everything that I've learned uh, from uh, Dr. Esselstyn and, and all the other plant-based experts and, and uh, from Mark Sisson and uh, Professor Cordain and, 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 and trying to understand more about our body's metabolism and all that and then kind of uh, uh, getting more of the background with the traditional diet proponents like Sally and Mary Inig and this whole discussion about fats um, it's not so much what uh, you know, I've added, I've added things to my diet, and I've eliminated some things, but uh, it, it uh, it's not a huge change from uh, what you saw me eating uh, years ago. But just these, just these, just the difference enough so that I could start. Uh, well, I could be swimming, just treading water here for a while. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, more than two or three years ago that sometimes I would start swimming and treading water like this. Of course, I, I do it faster if I'm on my own. You really can't see it here, but I really tread. I go, I push back and forth against the water with my hands and my legs as I'm talking to us in this video. And, you know, I'm doing more talking than I am treading water. Uh, but anyway, uh, back to uh, this video by Jasmine uh, Rana. Um, it's just uh, amazing. She gives this whole discussion about how our body learns, and I say learns or relearns, I suppose I should say, how to produce uh, energy from our fat stores. And uh, she talks about ketones, and, and she talks about ketones in between our meals that she calls the, the fasted state. And uh, she talks about the, the different organs and the tissues that use the ketones, including the brain. Uh, a long time ago, they used to think that the brain could only use uh, glucose. But now they find that normal metabolism, if it's functioning properly, can use uh, the energy from ketones. And the, the whole notion that uh, your body can can uh, um, uh, can can provide the necessary amount of glucose and ketones from the fats as necessary for a sustained um, for a sustained period in between your next meal, and that may that could be 
it could be a week, you know, if you were running around 50,000 years ago. Uh, so anyway, I, I hope you have a chance to watch her video. Now one of my favorites is uh, Natalie Butler, and I think she's a registered dietitian. Uh, by the way, I, I don't know any of these people on YouTube, and I, I, just, I just have my impressions of them uh, from, from uh, watching and uh, uh, listening and reading some of their materials. But uh, Natalie gives a pretty good discussion, a definition of the health issues uh, that are involved with processed foods. And I think after you listen to her lectures a few times, uh, you'll really be able to distinguish between real and fake foods, uh, uh, fake products, or fake foods, yeah. And these are all the refined uh, products. So she has a wonderful disposition and she's just full of uh, good information. So she's on my list of people that I hope you can watch. Now we talked about the, <clears throat> the importance of omega-3 essential fatty acids. And remember, there, there are variations of that. There's more than just one. So you want to get them from the natural state. I don't believe that man has figured out, or laboratories have figured out, how to make all these different variations in, in a very pristine uh, fashion where they're not uh, exposed to oxidative damage and become free radicals in and of themselves. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> Dr. Uh, William Lands is a proponent of uh, seafood and he's a proponent of what he calls the long chain omega-3 fatty acids. And he says that uh, uh, chicken and pork, for example, have uh, almost none of these what he calls longer chain omega-3 acids. And uh, he believes that um, this whole idea of matching the intake of omega-3 and omega-6 is very important uh, to, pre to prevent inflammation and to prevent chronic diseases. Uh, he he, he uh, condemns, really, the whole, uh, all these industrial uh, oils, uh, whether they're from corn or peanuts, sunflower, soybean, because he just says they're just loaded with omega-6 uh, fatty acids and they have little or none of the omega-3 fatty acids. And I'm sure, I, I can't remember in his video whether or not he highlighted the fact that most of these industrial oils are processed with high heat when they squeeze, try to squeeze these uh, uh, oils out of these materials and then to get the rest of the oil that's still stuck in the, in, in the, uh, in the product uh, after they've squeezed it, now they've got to mix some solvent in there and then they've got to apply some uh, deodorizers and bleaches and everything else so it just becomes a free radical cocktail. So anyway, I, uh, I wanted to include his video uh, in, in terms of how you can um, focus on your, on your health. Uh, here's another uh, very entertaining video by uh, Natalie. And uh, in this one, she talks about the, uh, all the different breads on the market. And she says that, uh, uh, well, she goes into how to avoid being tricked into buying what's really white bread uh, just because they've sprinkled some token bran flakes in there. So anyway, uh, because so many people are afflicted with uh, gluten sensitivity and uh, celiac disease and all that, um, uh, I, and, and, and because uh, all of these refined carbohydrates have such a serious impact on our digestive system and the health of, our, of the cells inside of our intestines and our colon and all that, that I thought I would uh, uh, include this video 
uh, in this presentation. Now, uh, uh, sticking with this whole idea um, that wheat and, and grain products are a cause of inflammation, high blood pressure, elevated uh, dangerous cholesterol particles that are oxidized and uh, uh, because they contribute to high levels of sugars in the blood and our obsessions for food, uh, I decide, I wanted to include Dr. William Davis who has a uh, uh, quite a lot to say about the dangers of of um, grains and especially modern wheat which he thinks that humans should avoid at all cost. So uh, he has a program in there uh, on YouTube, he calls it the Wheat Belly. Uh, I showed you earlier a sugar belly. Uh, no, sugar, sugar, uh, there was belly fat and sugar belly and baby fat. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, fat is everywhere. Why uh, fat is everywhere in terms of um, carbohydrates and especially refined carbohydrates. Why? Because refined carbohydrates uh, are easily converted into sugars and sugar turns to fat. Sugars turn to fat and they wreak, wreak havoc on our a hormone balance in our body. Um, sticking with a the theme here about omega-3, there's another molecule called DHA and that is what they call I guess a long chain omega-3 and Dr. Professor, I'm sorry, uh, Professor Michael Crawford who is uh, somewhere in England, uh, he summarizes uh, very eloquently what he believes is the is the link between seafood the the uh, eating seafood and human evolution uh, specifically brain function and he thinks that the brain evolved uh, in the sea for all animals uh, five to six hundred million years ago and it was using uh, omega-3 DHA for the structure and the function of the brain. In other words, <clears throat> over half a billion years ago, the first animals on earth, little creatures in the sea, <clears throat> when they first started to develop their brains, it was made out of fat omega-3 fats and specifically long chain omega-3 fats and Professor Crawford believes that early humans the Homo sapien and Homo erectus that they probably developed larger brains where they could start to use tools and communicate uh, they evolved because they were eating what he has, has um, is referred to as a shoreline diet that was uh, fish and mussels and crabs and oysters and things that they they could readily find on the shoreline and uh, he believes that the marine food chain is the best source for brain health and he's very clear where he says that fish oil is no substitute Fish oil is no substitute. And uh, I didn't include it in this video, but there's a, another professor uh, going all over the internet <clears throat> claiming that fish oil is so oxidized and uh, inflammatory that he would uh, never uh, use it himself and he's, he's uh, telling all people to stop any supplements of fish oil. Um, I didn't include him because I, I really can't judge the, the, uh, the data that he presents to back up all of his claims. Uh, but uh, we'll see later. There is a professor at 
at University of California in San Francisco is a medical doctor who presents a lot of data showing that uh, supplements like vitamin A and vitamin E and uh, uh, these, these vitamins and beta carotene actually shorten your life. So there may be really something to the notion that uh, taking fish oil supplements is not the way to go unless, like I said before, it's under very pristine controlled conditions where you're not, where man is not, where a laboratory is not manufacturing these fish oils but it's just trying to capture the, these oils with a minimum of heat and processing. Uh, maybe that exists, but um, uh, Professor Crawford would say uh, the best food that we can get for the brain is coming from the sea and, and seafoods. <clears throat> oh, well here's the video I was just uh, mentioning, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Tice, who's a doctor up there at uh, UC uh, San Francisco and he says that, uh, just read it off here, he says omega-3 supplements have no benefit. In other words, there's no benefit with these uh, omega-3 fish oil type supplements uh, in all the studies. Uh, he says that vitamin A, beta carotene, um, increase if you if you take these supplements of vitamin A, it actually you'll die sooner. It increases your the mortality rate. Uh, he thinks that vitamin D may have some benefit as a supplement. Why? Because, like I said, people have migrated from the tropics where there used to be direct uh, sunlight overhead, and that's where our whole genetic code uh, was was developed was in the tropics and when we migrated to the ends of the earth where there is a lot less sunlight uh, if you can't get it from your animals from your animal foods uh, then you have to do some supplements but even Dr. Tice says that the best sources of all vitamins and minerals are coming from whole natural foods and he um, uh, or maybe I stress that, you know, in a hundred years ago there was no such thing as a, a vitamin or a mineral pill. It was only, it was only traditional foods and, and living, living as your ancestors had taught you. And uh, so anyway, Dr. Tice reviews a lot of randomized trials that details, uh, details the benefits and the risks of many of these popular supplements. So I have a little a little cartoon down here, a little picture. Uh, if you're thinking of in terms of pills and capsules, uh, you want to be thinking in terms of whole natural foods more uh, as, as, as the first option. And Dr. Tice, uh, that's what he proposes. Now there's been a lot of buzz about soy and uh, Sally Fallon Morell uh, has a video presentation on soy and um, uh, she says that soy products if they were ever eaten at all and they were hardly ever eaten um, they were always fermented and that's because you want to get the bugs, remember I call the, the fermented bacteria, um, uh, the, 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 the lactobacillus and other bacteria and yeast that come from fermentation. You want the, I call them the bugs, you want the bugs to have a chance to, to denature some of the problems that are in uh, soy and in dairy for that matter. But uh, uh, soy is high in estrogens, so these are these are endocrine uh, type compounds that increase the estrogens in in our body. So if you have um, <clears throat> you know a lot of people that drink soy milk, their a level of estrogens in their body is just way off way off the charts. They're high in phytates. Phytates are chemicals inside of 
of um, lots of foods that prevent our body's ability to assimilate minerals. So uh, some people that are ingesting a lot of soy <clears throat> may be iron deficient. Why? Because phytates are eliminating their ability to assimilate uh, that kind of a mineral. Um, they're high in something called anti-enzymes and these are other chemicals that are found in soy and they're found in grains also um, and a lot of beans and legumes and that's these are enzymes that are there naturally to prevent the plant uh, this little seed from sprouting until conditions are right, until there's water and soil and other things that are appropriate for the growth of that little plant. So uh, if you don't soak uh, the soy, uh, well anyway, Sally goes through the whole uh, pros and cons of soy and it's, and uh, if you go there, um, I'm sure you'll think twice or three times about having any soy products and especially these newfangled uh, soy protein uh, products that are exposed to high pressures and they add motosodium glutamate and all that sort of thing. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I've mentioned Dr. Joseph McCullough before <clears throat> and uh, he has a program where he basically chastises the the governmental authorities <clears throat> Uh, on their assault on what he considers every American's right to have clean raw milk and dairy products. So Dr. McCullough is here in this uh, hazard uniform uh, interviewing uh, somebody who uh, has a lot of knowledge about uh, natural uh, dairy products and, and free range uh, grass-fed uh, animals and I, I, I guess uh, 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 eggs as well. But anyway, um, <clears throat> Dr. McCola is um, is one of the most uh, prolific uh, promoters of of, of uh, health and um, health advice and uh, uh, foods and things like that on the internet. So he's just got hundreds of videos, but this was one that uh, uh, raw milk doesn't get much attention uh, and it's something that uh, uh, if people really understood the truth about it and it was, um, well, raw milk was something that people consumed for thousands of years and they probably were a lot healthy, healthier for it. Uh, I've actually looked at raw milk in a microscope. Um, I got a little microscope at, at Berkeley uh, uh, through a friend many years ago. And uh, it's just an amazing all the, all the wonderful um, uh, little uh, things that are in milk that we can use to our benefit. Uh, talking about raw milk from a pastured animal. And uh, so I agree with Dr. McCullough and I support his efforts. <clears throat> um, here's a, uh, an overview of the whole dairy industry by Sally Fallon. And uh, she discusses uh, what the dairy industry, I'm talking about the big factories now, the commercial ventures, what they feed these animals. And she goes into the whole discussion. Do you feed them soybeans or are they allowed to go and feed on grass? So these are very important questions to decide whether or not you're going to drink milk or not. Uh, she talks about the natural antibiotics that are in raw milk in a, in a grass-fed animal. And she talks about the need for man-made antibiotics for all these commercial dairy farms because they're fed soy and corn and things that they were never meant to eat. So they get infected and their stomachs get inflamed and they get sick. So they, uh, the owners of these uh, factory dairies have to put these poor animals on antibiotics. 
And of course those antibiotics get passed into our milk, uh, making it a very dangerous uh, substance to drink. So that's why I think I, I may have said it before, but I think everyone should be of legal age to be able to walk into a supermarket just like they have a legal age minimum to go into a bar or buy cigarettes because you've got things that are just as dangerous in the supermarket and one of those one of those foods would be the whole all those dairy foods made from animals that are freaks of nature as Sally calls them <clears throat> Uh, she goes into the history of pasteurization and how it kills all the enzymes and destroys the enzymes, I should say. And uh, anyway, a very good discussion. After listening to her video, uh, I started making plans to have my own little goat farm. And uh, that's coming. Uh, <clears throat> now, here's Dr. McCullough again, and he's... He's uh, another, on a video here talking about uh, water treatment. And like I said before, he urges uh, everyone to understand the importance of water treatment <clears throat> because if you don't filter your water, you as, a, as the human drinking the water become the filter. And I think that's a very powerful message and I think he's absolutely correct. In, uh, in this whole business about water treatment, uh, you want to, uh, Dr. McCullough, uh, he's interviewing a gentleman by the name of uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Houston Tamaz, Tamaz, and uh, they stress the importance of removing chlorine, the chlorine byproducts, which they call the THMs, all these volatile organic compounds and things like that. They also talk about the damage that chlorine gas uh, can cause to your lungs every time you take a shower. If you're taking a shower or, or uh, swimming in water that has chlorine in it. Uh, they said that the, they, they mentioned the American swim team, <clears throat> uh, that a lot of the, a lot of the competitors are suffering from asthma. Uh, why? Because the chlorine that's in the water, uh, not, not this water, this water is pure oxygen with some ozone. Uh, but anyway, if, if you have in a normal pool uh, and you're swimming in it, they said that the, the uh, damage to your lungs can be as much as someone that smokes cigarettes. Um, another uh, thing, another point about water treatment is that you want to remove the heavy metals uh, like uh, mercury, I think arsenic, and you want to remove all these pesticides and fertilizers because these are um, a hormone mimicking type uh, chemicals and when they get in your body they just cre create havoc on your, on your uh, uh, metabolic uh, functions and uh, uh, they're poison, poisonous to your DNA and all the rest of it. So you want to avoid, you want to filter your water, as Dr. Mercola says. <clears throat> uh, I found this uh, uh, little video about EDCs. Those are endocrine disrupting uh, compounds. And uh, that was that word, Corin, we were talking about before, uh, xenohormones and xenoestrogens. And the word xeno uh, comes from ancient language, uh, it means stranger. <clears throat> so just some of the areas that are affected by, by these uh, chemicals in the water uh, would be your pineal gland, your pituitary gland, your thyroid gland, your thymus, your pancreas, ovaries, testes, and your adrenal gland. So, uh, just anything in the horror, uh, in the whole uh, hormone signaling pathway, 
is just totally disrupted by EDCs. Now the World Health Organization, like I said, in the United Nations, they credit EDCs in the water with, um, as a contributing factor to obesity and, and overweight and whatnot. And um, uh, I think these things can be removed by reverse osmosis, uh, probably by some carbon filters. Uh, more than 90% of it can be removed by ozone machines uh, such as this. Uh, but this is just a pretreatment machine uh, that bubbles these things out of the water in a tank before the water goes into the house. Uh, RO equipment can be for the whole house as well, uh, although a lot of people use RO just for their drinking water. Uh, but <clears throat> like Dr. McCullough says, every time you shower or take a bath, uh, you can be exposed to some of these chemicals because your skin, your body will act like a sponge and kind of uh, absorb water and the chemicals that are in the water as you take a bath. So very serious. So let's move on to some experts now about chronic diseases.